I'm Adam Britt for QB365, and this is episode number two of The Breakdown. Like I talked about last week, what I'm trying to do here is break down your throwing mechanics, not NFL players. I'm wanting to help you, okay, the guys that are watching this show, whether you're players or coaches of quarterbacks or parents of quarterbacks. This video is for you guys, okay? So we're going to go right into it. First quarterback I have is Troy Allen. He's local here. He goes to Hebron High School. Did a great job last year. Led his team to the playoffs. All right, working with Troy for a few years now. Good pre-pass situation. Feet are in good, good shape. Up top, I like. Does a pretty good job. You see great L right here. Fair hands a little high. Not a fan. This is actually a video of almost a year ago. Probably a little over a year ago, actually. Okay, but big thing I want to talk about right here, all right? Everybody understands that to get power, okay, we need power. We need to drive from the backside, okay? We need to use that hip and get that extra power from the hip, okay? Well, sure, you need to do it for the power, but you're also going to need to do it to be able to control the ball better, all right? Notice what Troy does here. See how his knee has gotten well in front of his, his ankle? Okay, so now all of that weight as he goes toward the target, because watch his move. Watch the front foot. See how it really, he didn't really push into the ground here. Hip, knee, ankle into the ground, which pushes him toward the target. So now that front foot doesn't really go anywhere. Okay, so when that happens, you can see the shin angle gets ahead of the ankle. So now all that weight goes to his toe. Watch how that affects the rest of his throwing motion. You see his chest gets a little ahead. Now if you just showed me that, I'd be like pretty solid. But because I'm seeing the whole thing, all that weight goes to his toe and you can see where his back foot goes. He loses his posture, gets in front, has to step in front of the foot. Okay, I don't want the back foot to go any farther than the front foot. So here, ideally, I want no of that, no lean right there, no drop, no loss of his posture. I want him to be straight up and then to be able to rotate better because it's very, very hard to, to tilt and turn, okay? All that power is going to come from the rotation. We want that stable, constant spine angle so the arm can work with that, not have to adjust and work against that spine angle, okay, and that moving axis. We don't want that. So the big deal with this is he's got to drive farther to get that shin more vertical. When that happens, then he could put, work that power up through, up through the, the core into his arm instead of having to fall out and having that forward, forward lean, that forward tilt. Okay, so we were go work on it. We already have, like I said, this was over a year ago, driving. Watch the back shin angle. When I see that, when I see that stay there into the, for at any length of the time, I know that he's not really driving off the, off that back hip into the ground because that shin angle stays the same. So I want pretty quickly that shin angle to be not quite that severe, but you know what I'm saying that shin angle to start working towards the target. That means he's moving the hips to the target, so now his hips are gonna stay underneath his upper body, his torso, so it gives that support. So now, instead of the fallout forward and the lean, we're gonna stay vertical and be able to turn through the throw. All right, so that was Troy Allen. Now we're gonna start looking at a quarterback, young quarterback, eighth grader from Nashville area. that sent me, saw my video on YouTube, and sent me his throw, okay? Quality's not the greatest, but that's okay, okay? So the first thing that we're looking at, very close feet. We don't get a wider base, load the legs. We get very unathletic when our feet are this close together. We don't load our legs. Don't have anything ready to drive with. And you can tell he kind of lifts the ball up, okay? Front, arm, front hand does the same thing, okay? So the big thing I told him was feel like the arms 
instead of going here and here, go there and there to start with. If he starts feeling that, then he can get that, that circle with his arm, half circle, instead of from here to point A to point B to point C. Okay, So you can see point A to point B to point C to point D. We don't want that. That's a good way to make a robot. Okay, We want a smooth path. So we got to think about path, not positions. Okay, the, we want obviously we want those key positions to be optimal, but if there's no path and it's just from one spot to the other, we're not going to have that fluidity. We're not going to be able to have that arm speed, that arm acceleration. So we just talked about that, and the next day he sent me another video, and you can see already the improvement. Watch the watch the takeaway, the separation here. See how he takes that ball back nice? Now, I would rather the front hand separate with it. You can see kind of how the front hand kind of hangs back there. Okay? We don't want to separate too early. And yeah, he didn't, didn't really do what I talked about. Maybe a little wider with his feet. Need to load, load the legs up a little bit more, but that's okay. That's an easy fix. But I'd rather the hand not hang out right there. All right? When, when it's time to separate, separate. Okay, when this front hand stays here, it can kind of mess you up because then it's in a bad place and then it's really easy for it to, to try to really fix itself and really get out of control trying to get out of the way or it just stays in the way, which is kind of what he does here. We'll talk about that in a second. But he does a very, much, a very nice job of taking the ball away. You tell the L's much better. I know the quality's not great, but the ball looks like it's pointed back here better. It's not the nose isn't pointed at the camera right now. So that's an immediate improvement. And he comes through, a great move through. He's got a lot of good things going here, okay? But notice that how that, we talked about the front hand. It gets high and just kind of stays in front of his body, okay? It won't get out of the way, all right? So when it doesn't get out of the way, instead of clearing, so again, we can rotate behind the throw, rotate with the extension, okay? Now... The rotation stops, so now he's forced to lose that spine angle and start tilting ahead. Okay, that's what we talked about last time with, with Tom Brady. Okay, I wasn't talking to Tom Brady, I wasn't telling Tom Brady he needs to change. I was talking to the 10 year old that's trying to develop his stroke, or the eighth grader that has issues that hasn't been taught, or the 15 year old that's trying to work his way up the depth chart that sees Tom Brady as the best player ever, not disagreeing with that, but just says, I'm going to do exactly what he does. Imitation without the knowledge of what you're imitating is dangerous. So we need to try to see if there's a better way, especially for a young kid that might not have the talent of an NFL quarterback, for, the, for him to perform. Not the best way for Brady, Rodgers, anybody else to perform. Okay? So you can see again, he loses the spine, angle, tilts forward. So again, we're, he's going to throw those balls where instead of that that curl out, instead of it stays up in the air, looks like it's never going to come down. He's going to have that real apex is right in the middle of the throw, and the ball's going to start work down pretty quickly. Okay, Those balls where the receiver looks like he's going to catch it in his head, but all of a sudden it drops out of the air and he catches it at his knees. We're trying to get rid of those. All right, So he's done a great job, but he's going to continue to do a good job when he starts working on the front hand, getting the lower body a little bit more active starting in a better position, and then if he can get that arm out of the way, then he can rotate instead of having that, that, that tilt forward. All right. Last one we're going to do. This guy's special day today. This guy, Gabe Tiller, he graduated from Archer a couple of years ago. He's now a red shirt, going to be next year a red shirt sophomore at West Alabama. Okay, he's always had a great arm. Okay, he's a little rusty. He hasn't thrown much since the since the regular season. The big, the first thing that I noticed was he's getting the ball a little high. Okay, that ball is above his shoulder. I, I don't like seeing it that high. One, 
just when I take the ball from, from here up, the shoulders start to get a little tight, okay? We don't, tight muscles don't move very well. They don't move very fast. So we wanna relax, bring that ball down a little bit. Then you can kind of see as he pulls back, everything stays, it's just, he's just playing very, very high. Now he gets to a great L, okay? But you can see here, the one thing we've dealt with a lot is he wants to kind of lead with his chest just a little bit, okay? So when he leads with the chest, that ball drops, it drops behind his head, and the elbow gets high, okay? Again, not a terrible position if I just looked at this position, but because that high elbow, he can't support that very well, consistently at least. So that elbow from here has to slightly, slightly drop to go with that, that lean forward. So his throws, watch them today, he's throwing the seams, the curls, the, the, the comebacks, awesome. The ball's just flying, shooting to the, through the air to the, to the receiver. But when he misses, because he gets high and down, okay, that ball's going to drop out of the air. Okay, really almost never misses right or left, but because of that little bit of high, the chest leans forward, which is shooting the elbow up, okay, raising the release point, which makes him come back down. Talked a little bit about that last week about, about getting that high release shouldn't be your goal, okay? The, the, the goal should be the motion that drives the ball to the target and keeps the ball in the air. Okay, so the issue now is he's got to keep that spine a little bit more vertical. And then so now, again, he's got that consistent point to where the elbow can get ahead on a little flatter attack angle. Okay, so when he does that, his best throws probably aren't going to get hardly any better. But his misses are going to be better and less often. And he's going to have so much more control over the football. Okay. He's going, to he's going to be able to throw that ball over those linebackers and get them just short of the safeties. Okay, He's going to be able to control the speed much better and the trajectory much better. Okay, guys, that's it for, for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please, please, please like, share, subscribe, all that great stuff. And then quarterback, send me those videos. I need more videos to go through. I've already had, like, we already talked about that, that uh, one guy that sent me that video. And... That was awesome. I appreciate that. That was really good stuff to already see him throw, uh, get better after just one day. So he's going to continue to do that. And that's the only reason I'm doing this. Just so you guys that, that, that are really, really good kids, good athletes, you can run the offense well, you just don't throw the ball as well as you need to. And that's what I'm here for. So high school coaches, youth coaches you've got that kid that you want him to be the quarterback so bad because he's such a great kid he's got he's got all that all that character and he's, he can run the offense he just doesn't throw the ball well enough we need to get him to where he can lead your offense not just with his character and his work ethic but with his performance on the field and that's all i'm trying to do here is you guys to throw better okay guys thank you so much and we'll talk to you next time